Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of Salesforce flows and tackling a topic that can make your life a lot easier, loops. So grab your virtual hard hats because we're about to build some efficient flows. All right, picture this, you're building a Salesforce flow and you've got a bunch of items to deal with. Maybe you want to create tasks based on user selections from a multi-pick list. Instead of drowning in decision elements, loops swoop in to save the day, simplifying your flow. Now, what the heck is a loop in Salesforce flow? It's like your flow's magical tour guide for a collection of items. We've got three main amigos in a loop party. Loop variable, a temporary home for one item at a time. It's like a backstage pass for each item in the collection. Collection variables. These are your batch of items ready to be looped through. It's like a bag of tricks, each item waiting for its turn. Direction. Choose whether you want to loop from first to last or last to first. Most times, not a big deal, but it's there if you need it. Now, let's get our hands dirty with an example. Imagine you're the Salesforce superhero tasked with marking all child contact records based on the value of a checkbox field on the account object. We'll use a loop to make it happen. Start with a record triggered flow. Make it after update so it jumps into action when the account's checkbox changes. Get records. Grab all relevant contact records into a collection. We're creating an entourage for our loop party. Time to shine, Loop. Use the collection from the Get Record step. Double assign magic. The first assignment sets a new active value on the contact variable within a loop. The second assignment puts the contact into a new collection for updating all contact records later. Assign the contact record to the new collection variable within the flow after the first assignment. Finally, create an update element at the end of the flow to commit changes and update contact records. And that's it. Once you've done this, your flow is good to go. Hold on, before you hit that update button a thousand times, let us talk best practices. No DML in a loop. Never perform a DML statement inside a loop. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It just won't work. Avoid pink data elements in a loop. Using these inside a loop is like playing with fire. Designed to avoid hitting those governor limits. Create a new collection. Don't reuse variables, especially in loops. Make a fresh collection variable for your updated records. And there you have it, a flow that's ready to roll without hitting any roadblocks. If you want to deepen your knowledge of loops and flows, here are a couple of recommendations. Trailhead. Salesforce's free training platform has some awesome flow modules. Dive in at your own pace and become a flow master. Salesforce Ben Ultimate Flow Foundation course. Check out Tim Combridge's excellent course on Salesforce Ben courses for everything you need to start building flows, including step-by-step -step tutorials to create your first screen flow and record triggered flow, and hands-on projects to cement your learning and test your knowledge. That's a wrap for this video, folks. If you found this helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more Salesforce tips and tricks. Until next time, happy flowing.